All right, welcome back. We're now going to try and test Nathan's Mono Blue Tempo. In a we really hope you guys enjoyed the deck tech, and uh, yeah, I think uh, let's see if uh, we can get this rolling, and we're going to show you guys uh, kind of the best plays with this deck, and it's going to be fun. Control versus Mono Blue Tempo here. Uh, this is, of course, for standard. Let's see. I'll let you go ahead and be on the play first. All right. And this is a really great test uh, for this deck. I think right out of the out of the gate because a lot of creature-based decks, what they're scared of most is control. And <clears throat> I feel like we've got we've got some pretty good uh, defenses, some pretty good answers. Uh, so here's hoping we draw them. I do have one question for you. Are you glad that I'm not playing white for Terminus? I'm extremely happy that I won't be seeing a Terminus this game. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I think because I have that and that in my hand, I think I'm going to probably mull it because I have no blue source for both that card and this card. So I'm going to Mulligan. So this is um, <clears throat> a one lander uh, in this deck isn't the worst, but since we don't have a Curious Obsession in this hand, we're going to have to pitch it back to you. And I think because we're doing a, a, a test here, we're going to do free Mulligans. So. Hey, that sounds good. That does sound good. A gentleman's Mulligan, if that's you will. Right. That's right. That's an automatic standard cube rule, too. So. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, actually, um, interestingly enough, in the tempo deck, if your opening hand is one island and you have a one mana creature and a curious obsession, you might want to keep that. Uh, depending on if it's game one, game two, if you know what you're playing against, uh, one mana plus curious obsession plus one mana dude. It lets you draw into your deck and get right, the other lands. Draw into your second land, yeah. All right, let's hope for a better seven. All right. All right, so looking at this now, now that I have one, two, three, four, five, six of those, all right, six lands and one creature, I'm probably gonna ship this back to. We, um, if we're in a competitive setting, we're doing backflips with this deck, with this opening hand. Uh, the only thing we're missing is we would love to have a dive down or uh, a spell pierce. Um, we don't have that, but we have two little guys. We can get in there immediately. We've got our Curious Obsession. Let, we're definitely going to keep this. Okay, so I will not be taking any more general, Gentleman's Mulligans. I'm going to go to <laughs> six. So step, <laughs> step one when playing against Control, have the Mulligan to six. <laughs> that's, that's, that's step one in beating the All Control right. deck, is have them start with less cards than you. All right, let me see here. All right, so this hand's a lot better. Um, I have access to two spells of mine. Uh, I have the ability to maybe stall to maybe get my you know third land draw, so I want to keep this. Okay. Um, I'm also scry. I'm gonna think about that, and I am going to keep that on top. All right, Nathan, you're up. Okay. So we'll open with an island. We will tap it for one blue mana, and we will start with a miscloaked herald. All right, so I can't block that, so he's going to get in for one damage. So I'm going to draw. All right, so because I already knew what that was, I'm just going to take one. So I'm going to take a Memorial to Folly, tapped, and I'll pass the turn. Okay. That lets me get set up for this card, and then, well, let's see. This card coming up here soon, and I can also maybe play this on the next turn. Now, on this side, I see a black mana. I'm going to play like we don't know Jeff is playing blue-black control, but we do see black mana. Um, so we're, we're at an impasse here, a little bit of a decision. Uh, we want to know whether or not we want to go all in and play Curious Obsession right now. Or if we want to kind of play more conservative because we don't want to get two for one. But since we're on the play 
and Curious Obsession will trade for itself here. We're going to go ahead and play it. So we're going to bring in our blue mana. We're going to tap it. And we're going to Curious Obsession on our Miscloaked Herald. That's going to Make happen. Make him 2-2. Move into combat. Move into combat. Jeff doesn't have a whole lot to do, so he's swinging for two. And we're going to take We're going to take two, go to 18. So. Trigger, and, and we will draw. draw a card. All right. And then we will pass turn. All right, so one tap my land, draw a card. Now, that was good to draw for source, but since I don't have an island or a swamp, we're going to have to play that tapped, and I'm going to pass the turn. Now, that's going to give my opponent the option to say that I am playing a version of blue-black something. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. So now, the jig is up as far as knowing we're playing against blue-black. Since we know the meta pretty well, we can pretty much assume we're playing blue at control. Our two cards that we drew... We drew a blink of an eye off of our Curious Obsession, and we drew this Wizardry Tort off of our, for the draw for the turn. So then we will put in our third mana, and we will go ahead and move to combat and swing in for two. Um, normally I would ask, if I was playing competitive, I would ask if, how many cards he has in his hand. And he has three blue mana. If he has a counter spell, he would need to burn it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to tap a black. I'm going to cast Fungal Infection, okay. targeting their guy. So this is a two-two currently. It is a two-two. So you're trying. You're, obviously, he's going to make a two, make a one-one. Um, he can't block with the one-one. Interesting. Um, hmm. 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 If this resolve, I will get a 1-1 token. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that resolve. Okay. We don't want to tap out to, to counter it, so we're going to let that resolve. We're going to go down one, and he will get a 1-1. All right, so... And, and if any other creature was on the field, we would probably counter that. But since we can't be blocked anyway, mm -hmm. we won't lose our Miss Cloak Herald to this fungal infection. So, so I'll take one, I'll go to seven. Yes, and we will still trigger and draw a card. That's right. Okay, uh, second main, we, hmm. Second main, we're gonna tap, we're gonna do nothing. We're gonna say go. All right, so I'm gonna untap. Draw my card for the turn. Now that's something I didn't really wanna see, because now I have two of these. So, but I do have a play here, it sets me up for maybe a turn four of this. So I'm gonna play another John Catacombs tapped, and then I'm going to tap blue and a black, and I'm going to call, cast Thought Erasure. Oof. Okay. So Thought Erasure is basically Thought Seize without the pay to life. Um, I'm going to look at his <coughs> hand. If it resolves, I'm going to uh, have him discard a non land card from it. So that's not ideal for us. Um, we really didn't want to cast this spell right here, but we also don't want our opponent to have their choice of what they get to take out of our hand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap three mana and we will wizard retort that. Okay. So we will counter, we will cancel it. We didn't want to play that as a cancel, but we really can't afford to have our hands being taken that, apart. That's, that's good news for me because that gets the counter out of his hand and mm -hmm. then I will go to combat and yep. I will swing one at him. Yep, I will take it, go to 19. All right, and then it is his go. Yep, all right. So if I can find the 19, there it is, all right. Untap. Keep draw. Okay, okay, okay. So, it feels like we, we might be overextending a bit here, but we really need to draw into some kind of defense, I feel like, or another land. So, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in another Curious Obsession. Uh, our Miss Cloaked Herald is now a 3 3. Mm -hmm. We'll move to combat and we'll swing for three. And no blocks, I'm all tapped out. I'll take three, go to 14. So this time we will draw two cards because the Curious Obsessions, their abilities will stack. So we'll draw two cards. And let's see here. Let's tap one. Yeah. Tap one mana for a Siren Storm Tamer. and we have six cards in hand, we say go. All right. The reason why this deck feels so, so good is because 
Uh, we're mono blue. We're not a control deck, and I almost have a full grip of cards here. I, I still have six cards All in right, hand. So feels really good. Fill the room. Here's mm -hmm. my life return. Yep. Now. Seeing that I'm at 14, and he's got one island open, if he has Spell Pierce, he's going to play it. But I cannot play it. I'm going to cast Ritual of Suit. And um, we just said that uh, overextending was probably a bad idea. <laughs> this is where we get punished a little bit for overextending. So uh, when we play multiple Curious Obsessions, we run the risk of getting blown out with, this, with a Ritual of Soot. Um, I obviously can't do anything about that. My ritual so it's going to go away. I don't have the spell pierce, but as you can see, we can we we have drawn a bunch of cards off of our our curious obsessions, so we can rebuild. That's not the end of the world for us. So yes, we will lose our creatures, and they lose their fungus too. But yep. And all right. I'm, I'm all good. So okay, cool. So ritual soot has taken us down, slowed us down quite a bit, but we will see if we can't rebuild here. So. We will tap one mana for Benthic Biomancer. All right. And say go. Now I need a, I need to draw a land that does not come in tapped. That counts. <laughs> That's another field ruin. All right. Doom Whisperer. Yep. This is my workhorse. Mm -hmm. Does Doom Whisperer resolve? It absolutely does. I'm all tapped out. It'll be your go. Okay. We'll draw for turn. Okay. So. <laughs> now, I don't know. I do know that he has a couple options. If he does play the three mana creature that can bounce my Doom Whisper, that will leave him open so I will just play it again. So, you may have that option. So right now, what we're gonna do with this hand, we're just gonna pass. Absolutely. We can't attack into the Doom Whisperer. It's a big scary 6-6, six, six, but we can't at do anything the, about it currently. At the end of your so, turn, I'm mm -hmm. gonna pay two life, I'm gonna surveil two. Sure, that works. I like those. I'm gonna keep both those on top. Sure. I want to tap. Now, uh, as um, before you draw a card in your upkeep, mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to pay two mana, and we're going to cast out a Merfolk Trickster. Okay. So you're tapping my Doom Whisperer? Mm -hmm. Targeting Doom Whisperer. Uh, it resolved. Or, well, it, it may yeah. or may not resolve. <laughs> okay. Our Trickster resolves tapping down their Doom Whisperer. Draw for turn. It's really important to do that on their upkeep uh, before they can draw an, another card to counter your... Uh, trickster or answer it in some way. So I drew that. So I'm going three mana to play disinformation campaign. Okay. So that means that we have to draw a card now uh, or discard a card now. Mm -hmm. um, let's if this see. Resolves, we've got some reason we've got some resilient we got some redundancy here. Uh, mm. you can play spell peers but I'll pay two for it so I think here we drop a dive down. All right, so that resolves. I'll then draw a card from mm -hmm. the campaign. All right, so that's the, uh, the other card I was going to draw. Can't play that yet, so I'm going to play Memorial to Genius, and then I will pass the turn. Okay. All right. So the Trickster stopped six damage coming at her face which is actually super relevant. Um, we're still ahead on our race, and we can attack through right now. All right. So, okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do on this turn is we're going to choose to adapt our Benthic Biomancer. Okay. We're gonna pay two mana. We're gonna put a 1-1 counter on it. Uh, that will trigger. We will draw a card and discard a card. So we'll draw, okay. all right. And as you can see, we were lucky enough to draw another island, so we will discard that. We will play an island for turn, and <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna swing in for four. 
put you down to eight. Right. Um, we will say pass, but then we will tell Jeff that we have action on his upkeep again. Uh, at your instep, mm -hmm. I want to pay to surveil. Sure. I think I may want to discard. We're going to keep Moment of Craving on top, and we're going to put that in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And then because I surveilled two from Doom Whisper, we have a trigger on the campaign. Mm -hmm. The campaign's going to go back to my hand so I can play it again. So upkeep, untap, upkeep. Yep. And on, his, on Jeff's upkeep, we have another Merfolk Trickster. Okay. Taps that. See, it's really cool when that six that six power fly flample guy can't just beat in your face in. That's twelve damage that we've negated this game off of their Doom Whisper. Doom Whisper is a big scary card, and our little tricksters keep them from swinging in. They're far less effective when they can't swing at your face. Hmm. Unfortunately, now we're tapped out. And Jeff knows this. <laughs> I'm thinking I want to do this. I think I want to tap a blue, black, and one and replay my disinformation campaign. Okay. Which lets them to discard another card, and then I'm going to draw a card. We're going to draw a blink of an eye. Okay. So, draw a card from campaign. That was a good draw. So, now I'll play an island, or a swamp, sorry. That lets me play Thought Erasure. Mm, yep. So now Jeff gets to see this exclusion mage that I really, really hoped to keep. And we're going to have him discard that. Yep. Now I'm going to surveil one. We're going to keep this information campaign on top. We do mm -hmm. have a trigger. Mm -hmm. This is going to go back to my hand. Mm -hmm. So the whole point of my deck is to get out this information campaign, surveil with your Doom Whisperer. Thought Erasure, or the um, the blue-black split card, and able to bounce this to my hand and discard their entire hand. If I have enough mana, I can do it two or three times a turn. And if they're top deck mode, that means I pretty much can drop my Doom Whisperer and swing in for lethal. So, um, I'm, let's see. So I know he's got no counter spells, so I'm going to pass the turn. Okay. Untap. Now, normally he he would not know I have a moment of craving in my hand. So we'll drop uh, island for turn. I know he does not have counter spells. Move into combat. Got it. Swing six. So I'm going to tap one, play moment of craving on one of the triggers. In response, we're going to dive down. Okay. GG. Uh, kind of exactly how we wanted that game to go. Um, that Ritual of Soot is the most scary card that we see in control decks. Uh, it's four mana, it uh, three for one does, right? That's game ending in most games. But the power of Curious Obsession had us draw three extra cards that game and that kept us in the game. It also gave us extra fuel to discard to um, those multiple castings of Cure, or of, um, Disinformation campaign. Uh, we survived through those discards because we had extra fodder to get rid of. Um, we survived two disinformation cam two disinformation campaigns and a thought erasure, and we still got in for exaxes. That's what Tempo wants to do. It taps their big threats. It bounces their big threats. You get in for lethal damage. That's right. And with uh, even though I'm having discard cards, at least one or two cards per turn. I'm needing board wipes to answer his board immediately. Or else, as you just see, he taps my big dudes and I die. So you you can you can play thirty dollars thirty dollar creature cards, but uh, you know if they get tapped down two two turns in a row, exactly. they're not doing a whole lot. They're not doing <laughs>